America may have the highest number of millionaires and billionaires today, but do you know that the Astors became the first multi-million dollar family in the history of the country? Do you also know that the secret of this family's wealth lies in a conversation their founding father had with a stranger aboard a ship to England? I'll show you how one of four brothers who'd left Germany settled in America and used the secret business knowledge he had got from a stranger during his voyage to build a multi-million dollar business and become the first multi-millionaire in America. How did John Jacob Astor's strategic investments shape not only his fortune, but also the cityscape of New York? What role did the Astor family play in cultural development and expansion of New York's real estate? Watch until the end to uncover the Astor family's journey from their early beginnings as butchers and flute sellers to climbing the pinnacle of wealth and prominence in America. Originating from a lineage with Italian-German roots in the Italian and Swiss Alps, the Astor family gained prominence in the United States and the United Kingdom. The family's journey began in the 18th century, when John Jacob Astor, one of history's wealthiest individuals, first arrived in North America. The Astor family's ancestry can be traced back to Giovanni Astor and Greta Ursula Astor Giovanni, born in Chiavenna, Italy, and later passing away in Zurich, Switzerland, had a son named Hans Pieter Astor, born in Switzerland and eventually dying in Noslok. John Jacob Astor, originally Johann Jakob Astor, was the youngest of four sons born to Johann Jakob Astor and Maria Magdalena von Berg. Johann Jakob Astor, born in Waldorf near Heidelberg in the Electoral Palatinate, present-day Germany state of Baden-Württemberg, in 1763, worked in his father's butcher shop and as a dairy salesman during his childhood. In 1778, John Jacob and his brother George left Germany for London, where they established a flute-making company. In 1783, after the Treaty of Paris officially ended the Revolutionary War, Astor decided to sail to the newly formed United States, leaving England in November 1783 with musical instruments for sale. His ship reached the Chesapeake Bay in January 1784. Hindered by ice, it took two months for the passengers to safely disembark. During this time, Astor engaged in conversations with a fellow passenger experienced in fur trading with North American Indians. Fascinated, Astor extensively learned about the fur trade, solidifying his resolve to enter the fur business upon setting foot on American soil. In March of the following year, John Jacob Astor arrived in Baltimore. There, he rented a room from Sarah Cox Todd, a widow, and initiated a romantic connection with her daughter, also named Sarah Cox Todd. The young couple tied the knot in 1785 with Astor's initial plan being to join his brother Henry, who had established a butcher shop in New York City. After spending some time at his brother's shop, Astor ventured into purchasing raw hides from Native Americans, processing them himself, and then reselling the finished products in London and other locations, yielding substantial profits. In the late 1780s, he inaugurated his own fur goods shop in New York, while concurrently acting as the New York agent for his uncle's musical instrument business. Exploiting the opportunities presented by the 1794 Jay Treaty between Great Britain and the United States, which opened up new markets in Canada and the Great Lakes region, Astor quickly secured a contract with the Northwest Company in London. This company, based in Montreal, rivaled the trade interests of the Hudson Bay Company, Astor imported furs from Montreal to New York and shipped them to Europe, accumulating nearly a quarter of a million dollars by 1800, making him a prominent figure in the fur trade. Taking a cue from the success of the Empress of China, the first American trading vessel to China, Astor engaged in trade with Canton in China in 1800, dealing in furs, teas, and sandalwood. The U.S. Embargo Act in 1807 disrupted Astor's import-export business due to the closure of trade with Canada. With President Thomas Jefferson's permission, Astor founded the American Fur Company on April 6, 1808. 
He later established subsidiaries such as the Pacific Fur Company and the Southwest Fur Company, in collaboration with Canadians, to control fur trading in the Great Lakes areas and the Columbia River region. The trading post at Fort Astoria on the Columbia River, founded in April 1811, marked the first American community on the Pacific coast. Astor financed the Overland Astor Expedition in 1810-1812, contributing to the discovery of South Pass, a crucial route for later settlers on the Oregon, Mormon, and California trails through the Rocky Mountains. During the War of 1812, Astor encountered disruptions in his fur trading enterprises when the British seized his trading posts. In 1816, he entered the opium smuggling trade with his American fur company acquiring 10 tons of Ottoman-produced opium. The contraband was shipped to Canton on the package ship Macedonian. Later, Astor shifted from the Chinese opium trade and focused on selling opium exclusively in Britain. Astor's business fortunes revived in 1817 after the U.S. Congress enacted a protectionist law barring foreign fur traders from U.S. territories. This legislation allowed the American Fur Company to establish dominance in the Great Lakes region, absorbing competitors and establishing a monopoly. Astor owned a townhouse at 233 Broadway in Manhattan and a country estate called Hellgate in New York City, New York. In 1822, Astor established the Robert Stewart House on Mackinac Island in Michigan as the headquarters for the reorganized American Fur Company, turning the island into a hub of the fur trade. Washington Irving extensively described this development in his travel log, Astoria, relying on contemporary documents and diaries. Astor's commercial influence spanned the globe, with his ships traversing every sea, he and his wife Sarah relocated to a townhouse on Prince Street in Manhattan. Astor began acquiring land in New York City in 1799 and expanded his holdings along the waterfront. In the early 19th century, fueled by profits from China trade, he became more systematic in investing in New York real estate. In 1803, he purchased a 70-acre farm where he built the Astor Mansion at Hellgate extending west of Broadway to the Hudson River between 42nd and 46th Streets. During the 1830s, Astor foresaw the impending growth of New York and sold his interest in the American Fur Company and other ventures. He used the proceeds to buy and develop extensive tracts of Manhattan real estate. Astor accurately predicted the city's rapid northward expansion on Manhattan Island, acquiring more land beyond the existing city limits. While Astor seldom constructed buildings on his land, he leased it to others for rent and their utilization. Following his retirement from business, Astor dedicated the remainder of his life to supporting culture. He backed ornithologist John James Aubrey in his studies, artwork and travels, as well as contributing to the presidential campaign of Henry Clay. At the time of his death in 1848, Astor held the title of wealthiest individual in the United States. His estate, estimated to be worth at least $20 million, constituted approximately 0.9% of the estimated U.S. GDP at that time, equivalent to $598 million in 2020. To provide context, Jeff Bezos's fortune in 2020, valued at around $200 billion, represented a similar percentage of U.S. GDP at approximately 0.9%. In his will, Astor allocated $400,000 to establish the Astor Library for the New York public, later merged with other libraries to form the New York Public Library. Additionally, he designated $50,000 for a poorhouse and orphanage in his German hometown of Waldorf, the Astor House now serves as a museum honoring Astor and functions as a renowned fest hall for weddings. Astor contributed gifts totaling $20,000 to the German Society of the City of New York during his presidency from 1837 to 1841. The majority of Astor's fortune was left to his second son, William, as his eldest son, John Jr., faced health and mental stability challenges. 
Astor ensured sufficient funds for John Jr.'s lifelong care. William continued expanding the family wealth, becoming the richest man in America. Following his father's example, he invested notably in real estate below Central Park between 4th and 7th Avenues, experiencing rapid appreciation. Engaged in extensive building activities for nearly 13 years until 1873, he owned approximately 720 houses in 1867 and held significant interests in railroad, coal, and insurance companies. Williams' adept management significantly increased the value of the family's real estate holdings, leaving an estate valued close to $50 million. His residence, Rokeby, located in Barrytown, New York, was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1975. During the American Civil War, William successfully contested the income tax imposed by the United States government, leading to a ruling of unconstitutionality. He supplemented his father's bequest for the Astor Library with an additional $250,000, contributing $201,000 in land, books, and money during his lifetime. Under his guidance, the library's construction was completed in May 1853. In 1855, he generously provided the adjacent lot to the trustees, facilitating the erection of a similar structure, which was finished in 1859. A further contribution of $50,000 was made for book purchases, showcasing his dedicated involvement in the library's administration over many years. A benefactor to St. Luke's Hospital, William Backhouse Astor Sr. bequeathed $200,000 to the Astor Library in his will, along with an additional $49,000, the remaining balance from his earlier donation. In total, his gifts and bequests to the Astor Library amounted to approximately $550,000. In 1879, his eldest son, John Jacob Astor III, expanded the library by presenting three lots adjacent to the building and constructing a third similar structure, adding a story to the central building. His expenditure, exclusive of land, totaled around $250,000, culminating in the Astor family's collective contribution exceeding $1 million. Additionally, in 1852 to 1853, William built St. Margaret's Home at Red Hook, New York, and sustained its support until his demise in 1875. John Jacob Astor IV, another distinguished member of the Astor family, ranked amongst the world's wealthiest individuals at the time of his death in the sinking of the Titanic. Renowned for constructing iconic New York hotels like the Astoria Hotel and the St. Regis, Astor held a place among the world's richest when he boarded the Titanic. Reports suggest his fortune ranged between 90 and 150 million dollars, equivalent to 2.8 to 4.7 billion dollars in today's terms when adjusted for inflation. Astor displayed early awareness of the Titanic sinking, taking swift action to rouse his pregnant wife from sleep and instructing her to don warm attire. Adorning her with jewelry, he escorted her to a lifeboat on the deck, assuring her safety. Despite her desire to stay with him, Astor reassured her with words like, The sea is calm. You'll be all right. You're in good hands. I'll see you in the morning. Astor's final appearance was on the deck, clad in a dinner suit and holding a personalized pocket watch. Renowned as the landlords of New York for many, many years, the Astor family left an indelible mark on the city's landscape, with namesakes such as the famous Waldorf Astoria Hotel, Astor Row, Astor Court, Astor Palace, and Astor Avenue in the Bronx, where they once housed horses. The neighborhood of Astoria in Queens underwent a name change to attract investment from John Jacob Astor. Beyond the confines of New York City, the Astor family's imprint extends across United States history and geography. Chicago's Gold Coast District boasts Astor Street, named after John Jacob Astor. Towns named Astor are found in Florida, Georgia, Iowa, and Kansas, while Astorias are located in Illinois, Missouri, and Oregon. 
situated just south of downtown Green Bay, Wisconsin, there's a neighborhood known as Astor Park, a park donated by the Astor family for the establishment of trade school. The Astors left a significant mark on Mackinac Island, Michigan, and Newport, Rhode Island, where their summer residence, Beechwood, stands. Grand Hotel on Mackinac Island features the Lord and Lady Astor Suites, and its salon is aptly named Astor's. Further afield in New York, England, there's a hostel called the Astor. Additionally, a dormitory at St. George's School in Newport, Rhode Island, also bears the Astor name. The Danubius Hotel in Astoria, located in the heart of Pest, Budapest, Hungary, traces its origins back to 1914. The hotel was named by its original owners and Mihaly Geller, its first general manager who had previously worked at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York. In Shanghai, China, you'll find the Astor House Hotel on the Bund. Antarctica boasts Mount Astor, named after Vincent Astor by the explorer Richard Evelyn Byrd. The coastal town of Astoria, Oregon, draws its name from Astor, and an elementary school in his honor shares the same designation. Astor played a crucial role in the establishment of this town, a narrative vividly depicted in Washington Irving's Astoria, a book funded by Astor himself. Astor's legacy extends to the historic Astor Street in Green Bay, Wisconsin. In 1835, he founded the town of Astor in Wisconsin, and later, after its merger with the town of Navarino to create the borough of Green Bay, a neighborhood was dedicated to him. In 1908, the association football club FC Astoria Waldorf was founded in Astor's birthplace in Germany. As a tribute to Astor and his family, the group incorporated Astoria into its name. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't hesitate to tap the next button to watch others and leave a comment on what families you'd like us to cover next time.